Thank you. See this? Oh, look, David, a new game, a piece of paper. Close. Can't you see the smoke? No time. Give up. <sighs> Blistering message from Daddy. What on earth are we up to, and why the hell was the board meeting cancelled? Is that a rough translation? The original reeks of unwritten adjectives. <laughs> you always did have a way with words, your father. What exactly does he say? Imperative, we cast a vote on the takeover bid without delay. Again, a rough translation. Any hints which way to jump? Need you ask? I'm just checking. He wouldn't be unsubtle. Well, you'll know what he thinks and wants. I'll keep him happy. Fix a meeting for next week. Well, he's going to continue to cook gently. Why not today put him out of his misery? We need time to notify the other directors. Company regulations, Miranda, not to be broken even for your daddy. And we will issue him with an invite. Not that he'll come, but we have to go through the motions. Well, he's not likely to leave the sunshine for a formality. As long as we do as we're told. So, fix a meeting for seven days from now, by which time he'll be nicely grilled. What about you, David? Me? Yes. Are you planning any more disappearing acts? No, never again, I promise. Have to make do, I'm afraid. Why, what's up? We've got no towels, no clean towels, no napkins, no nothing. Oh. The deliveries haven't come in. What's the new boss going to say about that one? Oh, I think the laundry's in some sort of industrial action. So what are you going to wipe his hands on? That's what I want to know. Last week, sir. I could bring over some kitchen rolls, if you like. Don't worry, Kath, we'll manage. I don't think he's going to like that at all, the new manager. I mean, imagine the look on his face. Well, I, perhaps I can talk to him and explain. I mean, he's got to understand there's nothing we can do. Take no notice, this joke. He's just pulling your leg. It's me he's talking about. Oh, I see. You know, it gave me quite a turn. I thought you had some right over here. Congratulations. Thanks, Kath. <laughs> hey, Roy, I want you to meet Cass Brown, though. The backbone of the motel. Oh, I'll do. This year's Roy Lambert. Well, we needed someone in the bottom round. Now that I've become governor, like. Oh, pleased to meet you, Roy. Pleased to meet you, too. <laughs> did as I told you today. Did I? Get on your bike, they said. I saw I did. Yeah, I ended up here. I was lucky. Tried to get apprentice once, no chance. Hairdressers and construction, that's all they had. Cutbacks, they call it. Do a youth training scheme, he said. Well, it all counts instead of apprenticeship. Works for the best, doesn't it? Oh, of course it does. Where are you living? Oh, I'm in Diggs. Locally? Sort of. Wow. Well, let's get going. Nice to meet you, Roy. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. <laughs> Sorry about the towels, lads. We'll just have to bide our time, you know, until they sort themselves that's out. That's all right, Kath. We'll manage. Come on, Roy, no shirk. In first aid, we can do it, come on. Uh, I've done the fuel pump, the wipers, the plugs, and the heating. What's next? I'll check them first. Right. Yeah, listen, uh, Georgie Fuller would have given his high teeth for this job, you know that? Oh, yeah. Him who lives and breathes dance. That's the one. Could have had him here instead of him. After all, the devil, you know. King of all double tops, eh? Very cosy it would have been. No strangers about. Listen, mate. Roy is all right. I know he's all right. I'm just trying to make life easier, that's all. Oh, yeah. And the dartboard would have been splinting in a couple of days. And your dear old Georgie mate, could he have done the fuel pump, the heating, the plugs, and the wipers all in the first morning? With a little help from his friends, he could have done that. I'm sure. I'm surprised Jay Henry didn't say it outright. What's that? Do as I say, and do it quickly. He's not quite so heavy-footed. <laughs> well, with all the pollards, shoulder to shoulder, you won't need me, will you? What brought that on? He feels rejected because he can't play ball with the grown-ups. He doesn't have a vote, remember? Yes, yes, too well. Oh, is there any chance that I can sieve away for a couple of hours this afternoon? Why don't you? Why not? Something special? Just helping out. Good Samaritan? Not quite. I'm house hunting with Paul. Paul? Something happened that I haven't heard about? Not especially. It's his house. I'm just helping him find it. Second opinion, that sort of thing. Oh, yes, indeed, yes. That sort of thing. This really isn't good enough, Mrs. Brownlow. Well, I know that, but there's not a lot we can do about it, is there? Oh, no clean tablecloths or napkins. That really is the height of sloppiness. I will not tolerate it. Well, there's some in store. I mean, they're old and a bit ragged around the edges, but at least they're clean. We'll want them all you can find. Well, there wouldn't be enough for the whole restaurant. Well, as many as you can locate, please. What about those brightly colored ones we used at the Christmas party? No. I forbid it. This is my restaurant. This is not a gypsy caravan. Oh, only a suggestion. Does the Hotel Sasha in Vienna have garish tablecloths? I don't know. Does it? It does not. And I will not have them here. Horrible, ugly, hideous things. No. 
How's that Montego estate coming along? Daughter, mate, no problem. Oh, finished it then. Finished it, they haven't even started it yet. Real bliss, this. Not having Harry Maguire looking over your shoulder with a stopwatch. Sydney, we made a promise. We got a customer. What's that? By lunchtime. Okay, by lunchtime. So what else new? If not sooner. I'll have an early lunch. Sydney. I just wonder what to do. You know, I've got to do the fan belt, so does it mean taking off the radiator, starting from that end? Or going around the back, taking off the bubble and working through that way? Because you've got to work all these things out. Careful planning. Saves a lot of time in the long run, doesn't it? Got a bloke out here wanting to know the uh, quickest way to the nearest chippy. Hang on, kid. You're skating on thin ice there. What? Joe McDonald. Punctual is his middle name. He's a stickler for you, so you're wasting time asking questions like that. Take no notice of him. Tell the geese it's left up here straight into Heathbury. He'll come across the first chippy there. Ah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Georgie Fuller would have known where it was. You'd have told him. Just thought you'd like to know the song. Montego Estate, Sydney. OK. Time and motion study complete. Be with you in a minute, Governor. You can hardly hold me responsible for a go slow or whatever it is. You are the housekeeper, Mrs. Brandlow. Linen is your responsibility, isn't it? Yes, of course, but not the laundry company. Please, please, not so early in the morning. Now, what is the problem? The problem is that I'm expected to use dirty tablecloths in here. That or lurid coloured ones. It's the laundry, Mr. Chance. You see, they're being very unreliable lately. They haven't delivered our clean linen. And Mr. Paul here seems to think that I can magic some out of the air. Well, I can't. Yes, well, if you give me the details, Kath, I mean, if they can't deliver, then we'll have to look elsewhere. And what am I supposed to do? Well, what you can, Paul. You always seem to manage. Slave labour, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. All that apprenticeship lot gives the bosses an excuse to underpay. It's just as well I didn't get in on it. What are you on about? No, sorry, thinking out loud. Bad habit. Well, let's hope that's the only bad habit you've got, kid. Do me a favour, will you? Mm. Go and fix that Montego off me. Right. Got a steady form in this game, you know that? Uh, not a horseman myself. I'll stick around, you may learn something. Yeah? they got to get them fit after the hurling in the winter, see? You say so. Hello, oh, Ken. Ah, it's Sid, yeah? Sid Hooper. Do us a favour, mate. Will you put a five each way on for me and a 3.30 lobby lugs? Yeah. Good lad. Bye. Yeah, you got to pay attention to your business. Got a steady form. That's what it's all about. Are you quite finished? Oh, sorry, man. I was uh, just letting the kid have the benefit of my worthy knowledge. Appreciate that, too. He's no kid. How's that Montego estate coming along? Oh, come on, you sound like a broken record. What's the matter with you? Roy is doing it for me now. Roy? Look, Sydney, would you leave the delegating of work round here to me? If you say so. But we could have this place running like clockwork within a week, you know that? Oh, you think so, huh? You just listen to your Uncle Sydney, mate, and you will see. You busy this afternoon? One or two things to do. I'm celebrating something I'd like to share. What's that? Do you know it's been six years since I came to King's Oak? I would like to drive into the country and see it as I did for the first time. It's a beautiful day. Yeah. Suddenly, I'm not quite so busy this afternoon. Lovely. Was a meal to your satisfaction? It was very good, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. New image, Paul? I beg your Napkins, tablecloths? Oh, yes. I chose them specially. I always do my best, my absolute best, to please. These are nice. Mmm, lovely. Would you like one? Wouldn't cut flowers be better? Why? Well, I don't know. Because we're not staying and cut flowers would be more practical. And much more expensive. <laughs> you wouldn't begrudge me my little pleasures, would you? Oh, I adore you and I accept just how expensive you can be. <laughs> I suppose we could buy plants. But we've got nowhere to plant them. 
It's always the motel garden. Yes, they seem so public. I haven't got a house, let alone a garden. Maybe Paul has the right idea. What about gardens? Well, he's thinking of buying a house. So he knows where he'll be a year from now. And I know where you'll be. Where? With me. But where are we? I'm sure this is the right way. I'm sure we're lost. We need an ordinary survey map. Nonsense. Well, it says turn left at the stile. Did you see a stile? But it must be this way. The agent should give us a place as a reward for finding it. Oh, stop moaning. You're going to have to get used to the idea of tramping through the mud. City life isn't the same as country life. Well, if I knew where I was going, I'd be much happier. We are going to find your future. I prefer to stay in the past. I don't need all this emptiness. You know, I think you'll make a very good lord of the manor. <laughs> Wellington boots are not my style. <laughs> no, but they're very practical. Should I get a gun dog as well and one of those jeeps with high wheels? Look, let's just get the cottage first. What does it say on the sheet? A rustic, cozy cottage set in on grounds. In the middle of nowhere, it seems. Charming period piece. That means all, doesn't it? Well, I don't like modern houses. Small, square rooms and lifeless brick. Just remind me who's buying this place. You are. Oh, so I am. I'm so sorry. I thought for a moment you what were. What else does it say on the sheet? Secluded, quiet backwater. Obviously. Just think, no traffic noise, no aeroplanes. No roads, only the helicopter. I think this will be the ideal spot for you, Paul. In need of slight modernization. <laughs> oh, dear. My thoughts exactly. It is a bit of an exaggeration, isn't it? Well, they're taught to write these things, you know. Well, should we go in now we're here? I fear it will fall on our head. You could do things with it. Like what? Put it out of his misery? I was thinking more of investing a few extra thousand. A few extra thousand would make it into a more expensive hovel. No, it's too expensive, too much trouble. It's a pity it sounded so good on paper. Oh, well. Shall we go? <laughs> There. That's what I wanted to see. Goodness, it really takes me back. You're incurably romantic, aren't you? I have to be. Got to earn the pennies. Books sell when they're romantic. You'll have a lot more time to write now, of course, if... If the motel is being taken over. Hmm. Yeah, I was partly thinking of that, of course, yes. But I was also thinking I'm not sure I'm very happy at the motel anymore. Too many unpleasant memories. Mm-hmm. Well, we've had our good times, of course, but when I really think about it, most of the important events I associate with the place aren't very pleasant. Only when I get away that they really stick out in my mind. Oh, secret phone calls to Sarah. Baby, me lying to you, avoiding you. I do understand. But I don't think we should let things like that matter too much. Now, alone with you doing silly, inconsequential, impulsive things, it's all very clear to me. I've loved playing truant. It's like being let out of prison. I know I have to go back, and I'll hate it. Yes. I knew you were harboring thoughts like that. What I didn't realize was quite how serious it is. I think it would be best to go on holiday. You're absolutely right. Right. Well, we make plans Let's then. Let's make it a second honeymoon. I could stand one of those, couldn't you? I'd say I'm into that. Yeah, you're the best thing that ever happened to me. I love you. Any chance of a lift home? I don't think I can get back with all this lot. Of course, Kath, you've got it, no problem. Oh, thanks, love. Oh, that's a weight off my mind. The pull is everywhere else. Mm. God, be the last big shop I shall do, you know, for the family. Oh, 
They must be ready for the off, then. Oh, I should say so. They were packing four bags last night, and they had to unpack them because Kevin had put all the nappies away by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess they're excited. Oh, of course they are. I mean, it's new beginnings for them, isn't it? New life, wonderful. If I was 20 years younger, I'd be going well with them. <laughs> oh, come on. So when's the first visit? Oh, give us a chance. Oh, no, I'll wait till they're settled down. I mean, I wouldn't dream of going over before they know where they are, you know. Well, they'll be begging you to come over in a couple of weeks. Then. Oh, well, no. Give them plenty of time. It's fantastic for them, though, isn't it? His dad's meeting them at the airport. I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all arranged, yeah. Oh, they're thrilled to bits. And Glenn, she's gonna give me a ring, you know, the minute they land. Put my mind at rest. First of the long-distance telephone calls. You're gonna be having lots of those from now on. Yes, just think. My little granddaughter should be a Canadian citizen. Just think. She'll be growing up. And I shall miss out on all the growing. Oh, Kath. Don't upset yourself like that. I can see you whizzing across the Atlantic every other weekend to see him. I mean, it all happened so quickly, didn't it? One minute they're a little baby, and the next minute they're a young girl. Oh, Mac, I won't be able to get out there very often, will I, once I get retired on my pension? Of course you will. They've got those special family reunion trips. You know, at special prices. Oh, no, I don't see myself managing that. They're going away for good, and I just can't believe it. Kat, don't upset yourself. Come on. I mean, I'm very happy, really, you know, for Kevin and Glenn and all that. I mean, new beginnings, but it's... My little baby, it's my little Katie, that's the hardest to bear. I don't know what to say. I mean, I may never see her again. She'd forget her grandma, wouldn't she? Of course she won't. The truth is, Matt, I don't know what I'm going to do without them, really, I just... <laughs> You're watching UK Gold, where next this morning we join the lives and loves of neighbours. That's right after the break. <laughs> 